is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Once again, Alan, right here at Sports Grill, it was all about Bird Road and the Wings. They get it done. Three and O, baby. What do you think about that now? Last three weeks. I think you need to stay on at the Bird Road location. Apparently, Miami, the Miami Lakes location brought bad luck, but it's an equally fine location, actually. <laughs> but we got the mojo going. No, seriously. Um, good performance overall. Obviously, nothing perfect because it's a it's a uh, you know it's it's a divisional game, and, and there aren't there aren't two great teams. But the bottom line is they found a way to win the game, and that's really all that matters for them. Style points aren't really that important right yeah. now. No, and you beat a bad team that you're supposed to beat. And when the Jets come back here in, mid -de in mid-December, you're supposed to beat them again. Right. And when you play the Giants – Logically, you're supposed to beat them. So, yeah, they got to take care of the of the business uh, again. The margin for error is completely gone. If there's any hope, however, however small they are of making any kind of playoff push, they absolutely, you know, they need to take care of business no matter how it gets done. It was no work of art today, um, but they got it done. And when they needed a big drive, uh, really nice, pretty much game clinching drive in the fourth quarter with the help of a really really bad call by the official but then again there were plenty of those on both sides and anybody who's watched a lot of nfl games this year knows that they're 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 all over the place i mean i'm not sure i recall the season with this many really really bad calls it's almost like the officials feel the need to interject themselves into the game i mean there was a dpi on on x oh my god and i mean they better and then there was the port they called the push off yeah that really was ridiculous. terrible dude no. God, that, that, you, you know, you know, I lost my bet there on that one. They allow that when I get over 52 and a half yards. There you don't go. They, don't they understand that they screwed me over with that one? I mean, that's just he ended up with 50 yards, dude. I was I was short by three yards. I needed that catch. That's cause for disciplinary action right there. I mean, that's terrible. I'm telling you. No. And then after after getting being on the short end of most of the calls on the Dolphins, got the benefit of that. I mean, it was a huge call because it negated the sack that would have pushed the Dolphins out of field goal range when they were up 21-14 that allowed them to continue that drive. And eventually, basically, they, they milked the clock pretty much all the way down and then kicked the short field goal, which is what they needed to do. And I hope that when people saw them line up to go for it on fourth and one and realize that what they were trying to do is let's see if we can get a cheapy Right, PP first down on an offside, and if not, we'll just kick the field goal. It'll be, you know, it'll be twenty three yards instead of eighteen yards. I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was a, it was a, a nice try. I knew that that's what they yeah. were trying to do. Yeah, we, were, we were talking about it. it was, it was smart at that point in time. Uh, your thoughts on Tua's play today, man? I'm going to use the word I use for him whenever he has a good game and really good numbers. He was very, very efficient. Um, I don't think he did anything fantastic, and I know his fans are going to throw out his numbers and all that, and they're going to go nuts over about it. And yeah, he had the big sixty-five-yard touchdown pass to Mac Hollins. That was nice. Which, no, it was a blown. It was a blown defensive play that he took advantage of that any quarterback would have taken advantage of. I mean, it, it, but, he, but he completed it, bro. Hey, hey, listen, man, <laughs> I'm watching Ryan Tannehill. Lose to Houston yep. because he doesn't have Derrick Henry and he can't go out and make plays. Meanwhile, this kid doesn't have an O-line coach, doesn't have an offensive coordinator, doesn't have an offensive line, doesn't have a running game. Although today they actually popped a couple runs. Uh, and, you know, he's trying to overcome. So I'm just saying he makes plays and Tannehill doesn't. And Tannehill's got better not, receivers. Can we not try to pretend that he did everything on his own? I mean, he threw a bunch of passes to guys that were wide open. Like I said, he was very efficient. He played a really nice game. That particular play was all about a busted coverage where he basically, Mike Collins basically had to wait for the ball to get there because, but he was so wide open and make a difference. I will tell you the one play that was huge and it was on the touchdown drive in the fourth quarter. And actually the pass with the third and seven pass to Jalen Waddle, mm -hmm. the next to last play of the third quarter, that was his signature play of the game. That was the one throw where I'm not thinking, well, every quarterback in the NFL can make that throw. That one right there, no, I don't think every quarterback in the NFL can make that throw. That was 
Spe- that was a special. Talk about the one he put right on the outside of the def- uh, of with the Correct. defender. Uh, yes, yeah, that was, that was a fabulous. His ball placement is just absolutely awesome. You know, I mean? and rest- by the way, on that fifty yard throw because it was fifty yards in the air, he didn't get to plan himself. He's coming off a scramble, and he still has a middle finger that isn't completely healed. We got to get, and it's accurate. I, I, I'm going to give. No, the it wasn't accurate. Credit. He made Holland's wait. He planted his feet before he threw it. No, it's not really planned. Go look at go look at it. I put the highlight up. up. His feet are planted. It's not planning. He's moving. Big O, here's the thing. First of all, I'm going to argue again with you. His feet were planted when he threw the ball, and he did the job he needed to do on that play. But let's not pretend that's a great play by Tua. He did what every quarterback in the NFL. I'm just saying people say he can't throw 50 yards. I'm just saying. That's the standard. If that's the standard, then let's let's get another quarterback. 50 yards is nothing for an NFL quarterback. Well, nothing. I'm just saying, but people say he can't throw 50 yards. Who said he can't throw 50 yards? He's throwing 50 yards with a fractured finger. How many times are you going to throw the ball 70 yards in the air, dude? Come on. I I understand that, Big O. I understand that. Okay. And first, and also, I saw somewhere where somebody put an next gen stat that was his longest throw in the air. That's that's BS because last year, the the drop by Jakeem Grant against Cincinnati, look at the replay. It's from his own five to the Cincinnati 40 and do the math of the Cincinnati 41, that's 54 yards. Yeah, okay, that's so that, that's That's inaccurate. Okay, but again, yeah, no, no, quarterbacks don't throw 70 yards in the air, but for a quarterback to throw it 50 yards in the air and we were supposed to act like that's, that's a big deal, it's not a big deal. Well, for him, again, it is, because, for him, it is because there. for him, it is because apparently we have people walking around thinking he throws only 10 yard passes. They like forgot that in Alabama, he did throw deep. The problem is this stinking offense doesn't give you that many opportunities. He Plus, he doesn't it. have he doesn't have time to scan the field, plan himself well in the pocket, and unload. It just that's not in him, unfortunately, because he doesn't have that there. You know, well, no, you and I, you and I have, a, have had this disagreement because I, I know it's not to me. It's not all about the offensive line not giving him time. There's also a reluctance for him to throw the ball, and when he did throw the ball down the field, and I'm not asking for a 50 yard pass all the time. I'm, at, I'm asking no. throw the ball down the field, and when he tried in the first half, he overthrew Jalen Waddle, who was fairly well covered, and floated over his head and right into the arms of the safety Ashton Davis for a pass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's not his game at the NFL level for Tua to be successful. It's going to be what he what he had today, which is an awful lot of short throws. Where if his guys are open, he's going to be accurate, and it's going to work. But if it doesn't work around them, then you're going to have problems. Yeah. Well, remember, we're talking about an offense that can't block, and we're talking about an offense that can't run. Offense blocked so, today, and offense the day you get, the, day, the day you get an offense that can truly block and can truly shove the ball down people's throats, then all of a sudden. Linebacker play comes up, that gap develops in the in the middle of that secondary, and he's going to end up killing people with that, just like Tannehill does at times when he has the horse running the ball. And, and I'm not asking for Derrick Henry for Tua. I'm just saying if you give Tua a competent running game, his passing game is going to look even better at that point. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but you bring up Ryan Tannehill as a com- as a comparison. I would I would prefer the Dolphins have a quarterback who's better than Ryan Tannehill. That's oh no no no. I'm just yeah. saying no, no, dude. I don't want anything to do with Ryan Tannehill. This kid can play quarterback. Ryan cannot. Ryan is a game manager on his best day. This kid's a baller. If you give him the weapons around him, he can be a baller. That's the difference between those two guys. All I'm saying is how Ryan is able to take advantage when the linebackers are sucked in. That's a luxury that Tua does not have. Is all I'm saying right now. That's all I'm saying. That's the only comparison I would. But again, make. look look at the completion today. It was 27 for 33, which is highly efficient, and yeah, most, man. most of his throws, his guys are wide open. So it's like he obviously he's he's not doing it by himself. So anyway, but I don't want to take anything away from Tua. He played a very very good game. He was highly efficient. But I don't I I I have a problem with the narrative that it's. It's all him, and he's got absolutely zero help, and he has to make everything happen on his own, which to me is complete garbage. And the offensive line today actually played a pretty good game. Actually, you know, no sacks today. And you know what was really nice, uh, Alan, that they were able to pop some runs actually today yep. several times. I thought that was actually really cool. Yeah, and, and amazingly enough, now one of those big runs was out of the out of the Wildcat, which they can't get rid enough soon enough for me. I mean – 
man, am I sick of seeing that. I know, um, I know, we all are, dude. Yeah, but no, they had some, they had some nice runs. And if you saw, like, on the one that Gaskin bounced outside, I think he wound up getting 20 yards off of it. Our friend Albert Wilson with a really nice block where he he basically drove his guy like seven yards up the field. That was that nice. Was, that, was, that was good. Yeah. That was actually really good. I saw I saw that play. That was uh that was really nice by Albert Wilson. And he threw and he threw a very nice op- option pass to Preston Williams in the back of the end zone that was incomplete, but Williams was not very open, and there's only one spot he could put it. And they almost wound up completing it. Almost, almost. And he got injured on that one. Shocking Can we just can they just leave him there in the one in one of the five boroughs? Do we have to bring him back to the sixth borough? Can we just leave Preston and his bad, you know, crypto uh, uh, tips like with Dogecoin? I mean, why are we wasting time with this guy on the roster already at this point? Seriously, no, why- that's, a, that's a fair question. I mean, you're not getting. He's got five catches on the year. It's not you're getting a whole lot out of him, to be honest. I mean, but he's always injured or he's always dropping passes or whatever. It's just like, you know, I watch Matt Collins and dude, he just reminds me of Keith Askins and Udonis Haslam and Aronde Gadsden. And, you know, he just reminds me of one of those dudes that may not be the most gifted guy on the team, but you want that some bitch on your on your field all the time and you want him in the mix because somehow or another he finds a way to make plays. If he's on special teams or if he's on offense, you know, the, I, I'm so frustrated with this. I'm gl- I was so happy to watch him today, but I'm so pissed that you keep depending more on Preston Williams when Matt Collins is there ready to help you. And every time you call on him, the dude comes out of a booth like Superman. No, and it's interesting. Actually, I, I did like uh, some research on Friday, looking up the pending free agents for the Dolphins. And they have 19 total. And to me, the two guys who stand out are Emmanuel Agba and Mike Gesicki, very obviously. And beyond those two, I'm not so sure that Matt Collins wouldn't be the first one I'd, I'd make it a point to re-sign. Yes. Just because of everything he brings. And I want him, I like to I want him as a captain on. on my special teams. I want him playing on my special teams. And I want him to be my either third or fourth wide receiver all the time. Because until you show me that you can get three guys that are better and more reliable than Matt Collins, then I'll believe it. But for the moment, you only have one receiver that's more reliable than Matt Collins, and his name is Jalen Waddle. Outside of that, Matt Collins would be my number two receiver on this team. It's Matt Collins, it's Jalen Waddle, and Mike Kosicki. Those three would be on the field for me every single down of this Dolphins season. Uh, and you know who else has become like a guy, like a favorite target lately is Durham Smythe also. Yes, um, yes. And, yes. And he's a guy, and I'm not sure I've ever seen the, the, the dude, and the, mind you, the guy doesn't catch long passes, but I, I don't think I've ever seen him during his four years with the Dolphins drop a pass. Yeah, yeah. For, for a guy that's considered for a guy that's considered a blocking tight end. Correct. No, very very solid. Uh, had like yeah. a big play like early in the fourth quarter off that flea flicker where like eighteen yards or something. So no, no, he's he's very solid. I remember Chan talking about how last off season that they wanted to get him more involved in the passing game and and get him better in the pass. And to Durham's credit, and and the Dolphins, they have done that. They he has grown as a pass catcher and a reliable person uh, for them. By the way, Adam Shaheen is a guy that got injured again. Mm-hmm. And uh, th- there's another guy that, by the way, suffers a lot of injuries and yeah. really doesn't have a lot of miles on him to be doing that. No, correct. And, and if you remember, though, that was the book on him in Chicago was always hurt, which yeah. is why they kind of got tired of it and they wanted to trading him to the Dolphins, which turned out to be a good trade considering the Dolphins gave up nothing for him. But – and, hey, maybe if he winds up having to sit out the game next week against Carolina, maybe we'll have a Hunter Long sighting for a change. Oh, my God, yes. He was inactive once again. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll give uh, – maybe Flo might not nail it every time, but more often than not, he, he does. But if if you're young and he doesn't think you're ready, dude, he won't play you no matter what. And no. clearly, Hunter must not have proven that he's ready yet because – Man, I mean, they don't give him any opportunities whatsoever. And you, and you got to figure there's been some opportunities throughout the year where you could have slid him in there into the active roster. What I'm going to guess, though, is 
that at no point have they felt he's he's ahead of the three main guys, Gesicki, right. Smith, and Shaheen, and he's not a special teams guy like Seathan Carter, which is why Seathan Carter is active. So, but you, you, to your point, it was another inactive day for Noah Benogany. So yeah, clearly they're not they're not putting guys in there just for yeah. the sake of, of them being you know high draft picks. Yeah, once they trade X next offseason, Noah will then get the stage next year and he'll play next year, and then you'll find out whether he can play and adapt and, and stay or he is going to be toast. But, yeah, I don't think we'll see much of Noah until uh, next year. What else uh, stood out to you today? Uh, the abomination of a drive late in the first half oh. once they got into field goal range. I mean, I have two plays that to me – and it's maybe it's bad to, to pick out bad stuff in a win, but third and one from the 17, you have one time out left, you run an inside handoff to Miles Gaskin. I mean, can you scream, I don't want the touchdown, I'll be perfectly happy with a field goal attempt. Right. And then, I don't know how many seconds, eight seconds left from the 14-yard line, you throw a three-yard out to our friend Matt Collins on the sideline. What's that going to do? Right. I mean, are you serious? Look in the end zone if it's not there, chuck it. I mean, serious, I – that, that whole drive, and then, of course, Jason Sanders misses the field goal, which just goes to show that field, field goal kickers are very fickle, and Jason Sanders is not the first one to have, like, a dynamite year like he had last year and then kind of slumped the following year, which is why a guy like Jason Tucker is so good because he's year, year after year after year after year. Um, so that, that really stood out to me. Outside of that, um, I mean, again, it was – can you explain why the first drive is beautiful and then it goes to crap for the rest of the half? Every, I mean, every week. That's happened every so week. much, bro. Wow. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost crazy. Like, you can count. First drive is going to be a touchdown. The second drive is going to be three and out. Then the third drive is going to be one, pick up one first down and come up right. short on a third and one. Right. It's it's like clockwork. Um, no, I know I don't get it. Um it truly boggles the mind. And again, you see that first drive and it's like, okay, this is the week where they really, you know, they really blow out offensively. And here we are at the end, they scored 24 points, which is not bad. But again, do you, can you tell me the last time they scored 30 points in a game? Go ahead. Last year. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't there a Fitz game? Arizona last year. It was actually right. a tool game. Oh, that was a tool game, game actually. Yeah. That's the last time they haven't done it this year. I think there's like I, I did the, the research. There's like four teams in the entire NFL. I think it's Chicago, Carolina, Jacksonville. Uh, I think maybe Pittsburgh's in that group and the Dolphins. And it's like, I mean, if the defense does the job, it's okay. But at some point, it'd be nice to be able to show that kind of offensive explosiveness. But you got to stop with the play calling, like we saw at the end of the first half. It's like almost this notion of we're completely content now that we've gotten into field goal position. To settle for a field goal attempt, that, that to me doesn't cut it. Uh, Jalen Phillips, you like what you're seeing from him? Yeah, nice sack, good good effort sack where he came on a stunt and it was good coverage downfield and he just kept at it, kept at it. Um, I didn't notice him a whole lot outside of that, to be honest with you. Took a really stupid penalty. Um, I mean, you, you're kind of holding the guy and then like four yards out, out of bounds and instead of just disengaging with him, you do that by shoving him um, – I was completely dumb. Um, I didn't get that. So, um, no, I, I, to be honest with you, outside of the second, and I'm not sure that I really noticed him that much. Um, I think Van Ginkle, Van Ginkle had a couple of good plays. Um, he started, he's starting to show up the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Big time. Brandon Jones had the big time sack, big play in that game. Love that uh, kid in the first quarter. And then he left the game. I don't, I don't know if I ever saw him back, but he left the game with an injury. Um, I think Miami has found their tandem at safety. I really do. I like. I like the. No, I, I, think, I think Brandon has a, the perfect attitude to play strong safety. I really do. I know he's got to get a little better in coverage, yeah. and that's fine. Every young player has got to fine tune some things and and all of that. But uh, I, 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 he has a knack for making plays. Mm -hmm. He has a knack for being around the football, and that's the kind of stuff that you can't teach. At least that's the way I see it. No, and he's very physical, and he and he's yeah. a very good tackler, and that's that's a really nice element to have in the secondary. And I don't know that the Dolphins have had that um, for a bit. You know, when they were when they were playing Bobby McCain and Eric Rowe at safety, you had two 
nice cover guys, but neither of them are what you call physical players. Right. So it's right. nice to have that back there now. Yeah, that dude can that, that dude's a thumper. I do like him. Follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL. Catch his work if you're a Dolphins fan at Sports Illustrated. More importantly, bookmark his SI page if you're a Dolphins fan. Awesome way to keep up with the team. Uh, appreciate you, Alan, as always. Strong stuff, my man. We will catch up later on in the week, my friend. You be good. Sounds good. You take care, big girl. You got it, baby. There you go. Alan Poopart and our Sports Grill, Miami Dolphins Insider Report. This is the Big O Show.